Crossroads Media. Now, if you go back and listen to my instant reaction after game six, I was okay with what they gave me. They gave me an epic battle with the team in the New York Knicks that are super close to you, and it was just a performance where both teams were playing insane ball and someone had to win, someone had to lose type of deal, right? But the more and more I sit into my feelings, I'm mad that I'm not more mad. I should be more pissed because if you want to win the ultimate prize, you need to win those type of series. And you got to win multiple in a row. And we can't even get one in a four or five year span. In what universe is that okay? And trust me, I know what Tobias Harris makes. And I know how big it is to get him off the books. I know that Buddy Heald was unplayable. I know that there's a lot of issues with this team. I know Maxie's not ready yet, and you need a guard to pair up with Embiid to make this thing work seriously. I believe you have that guard, but that guard isn't polished yet. So that's all true. And if that's all true, should I be mad that I'm not as mad? And part of me goes no, and part of me goes yes. The Sixers have to find a way to start winning these series. They lose them every time. Every time. Like they lose them every time. To give me hope, I need to at least see something sprinkled in there for me to acknowledge that this thing is headed in the right direction. Even though... This is Daryl Morey's biggest offseason since being here, and I have faith that he could push the right buttons because people forget what he did with Al Horford. No one can, can touch that contract. Nobody wants Al Horford. Dude's a stiff. Got rid of Al Horford. Josh Richardson drafted Tyrese Maxey. We'll go through, I'm sure, we'll have plenty of time to go through the timeline of Daryl Morey and the moves that were made that were positive were significantly stronger than the hiccups along the way. I don't know. See, I'm very conflicted. I'm optimistic about what Daryl Morey has in front of him. I'm more angry about the loss. So we have to separate both. Because when the season ended, I was definitely still focusing more on the long run than the right now. And maybe it's because when we watched them give us everything they had in the tank, what are the odds that they could sustain that level of play throughout a couple more series? I mean, it felt as if if they were going to get over the hump of the Knicks, not that the Pacers are great because the Pacers are not great. But what could you give? Did it take so much energy out of you that you were basically 30% of yourself whenever you did see Indiana if you happened to actually squeeze by? It's just a fair thought. So because we as a city watched a team that was on one leg and with half a face that we understood This wasn't a journey that was going to last. So maybe that's why it didn't eat me alive as much. I don't know. I don't know. I should be more pissed, though. Because that's what we do. We hold our damn teams accountable. And part of that, as much as Joel Embiid should not be traded, and he's not soft, and he's not a loser, and he's not a fraud... He's someone I'm willing to go to war with every single season, regardless of the injury front, because this dude who has half of his body still gives you 35 points per game. Still gives you an outrageous, outrageous effort. I just need no stinker like we saw in game five. 
I can't have that. I can't have those sloppy turnovers, the poor body language when he's passing the rock to the other team. I can't have that. Not trading him, not getting rid of him, but I can't have that. Now, what we need, and and this is where I think the Sixers have to get actively better because their fourth quarter scoring, even though they scored 30-plus points in the fourth quarter in game six, but ultimately, we've seen the collapse happen when they can't run efficient, smooth offense. It's always clunky. It's always disjointed. They never run anything super crisp. They need to get their game polished in the fourth quarter, and I think it starts with guard play. It's not an Embiid issue. It's the style of offense in today's era with a few minutes to go and probably has to do with the lack of actual help surrounding him because it's easy to double-team Joel Embiid when you're not afraid of anybody else. When there's three minutes to go with this Sixers' current roster and it's a super close game, one possession game, isn't it pretty easy to think to yourself, let's get the ball out of that guy's hands and see if Tobias Harris wants to beat us, to see if Batum will be the killer, to see if Buddy Heald, who was a D. NP coach's decision to not even be on the floor will beat us. It's an easy choice. Of course. What I want to do is I want you guys to take a listen here to Ike Reese because I want to feel as passionate as Ike Reese does about the Sixers failing. He's right. He's right. And I'm mad that I didn't feel that strong about it as he did as soon as game six was over. So I'll let this run. This is from the afternoon show on WIP. Ike was fired up. I mean, I haven't heard Ike sound like this. I I couldn't even tell you if I ever heard Ike sound like this. Here's Ike on the Sixers and how the city is reacting to the loss. This nonsense about congratulate them, pat them on the back for trying last night. They were favored in this series. They were favored going into this series. Favorites. We lost to a six-foot guard with a bunch of second-round draft picks. And we supposedly got two top 20 players on this team. We supposedly got a coach who knows what the hell he's supposed to do and, and it's supposed to be an upgrade, but somehow we lose to the Knicks on our home court on game six. And everybody I'm seeing is talking about pacifying this, this damn team. Are you guys kidding me? This isn't about Joel Embiid needs to go. This ain't about Tyrese Maxey. This is about us demanding higher performances from this team and stop making excuses. I, I don't know why... I'm not there. I should be there. I acknowledge that that is right. That's right. Are you serious? Second round picks? But this is the issue. How can I pretend like Tobias Harris, a starter making a max contract who gets 30 minutes of play, scoring zero points, is in part of the reason why you can't beat this team. And Kyle Lowry, who shouldn't even be in a position to start and have to run up and down the floor for 30 plus minutes in other efforts, he now plays 13 minutes in this game six, but he's a starter And he also gives you zero. So you have two starters. Two! Two! Giving you no points at all. How much can you do when that's the case? And this is where I'll get on Nick Nurse. I can't rationalize at all Buddy Heal not getting run in the third quarter after you saw what was on display when he finally got rolling. You are so desperate for spacing. You are so desperate for three-point shooting. Tobias has taken two freaking shots, and he's got zero confidence. You know, campaign, Batum, they are what they are. But if you, uh, it's the name of the game. If you can get three-point shooting at this time of the year, you got to maximize that. I mean, that's just what you have to do. 
So I don't know why he doesn't get run. Maybe that's where you could have found the difference in this game. Maybe you're not in the position for this to be a Brunson takeover in the fourth if you get the separation you're looking for in the third when you are down 20-plus, you climb back, you have a lead, you go up 10 points. Maybe you could expand that lead and then run the Knicks out of the building with the crazy super run. 